Joining us on the broadcast uh, tonight uh, are Terry Newman, he's an Israeli entrepreneur, and Dr. Joseph Chalil, he's uh, the author and publisher, joining us from Florida. First, let me begin by asking you, Terry Newman, several of the Western nations uh, after the Makaba incident that took place on 7th of October came out in full support of Israel. India perhaps also being one of the first few countries to come out in full support of Israel against the fight against uh, terrorism. But what we have essentially witnessed over the last few days, some say the turning point essentially being the attack uh, in that hospital in Gaza. Do you essentially believe that there is a considerable pressure on Israel at this point in time First, to focus on the hostage crisis situation. Second, is to move in for a ceasefire at this stage, because many would argue that there has been a huge loss of lives in Gaza. Yes, well, uh, good evening and, and thank you uh, for the question. Um, I think that the whole discussion regarding ceasefires and hostages uh, is a question which really needs to be put to the side for a moment, right? What needs to be taken into account is the fact that there has been a three-pronged attack by Iran on Israel from the north, from the south, and from the center, which appears, as you've uh, correctly said, to have also support certainly from the Russians uh, and probably from the Chinese as well. And therefore, when Israel is making its calculations on what it needs to do, yes, the lives of those hostages are critical. But this is a country of 10 million people, a strong country. And in addition to that, we are the front line of the free world. And therefore, anything we do has to be in coordination with our allies, first and foremost, the United States, but also the UK, also India also parts of Europe as well who have stood up. The Chancellor of Germany has come to visit. The President of France has come to visit. So we need to understand that this is a far larger event than what we have seen to date. Okay. Dr. Joseph, uh, actually look at the current uh, geopolitical situation. On the one hand, you have Russia saying that uh, we want to be some sort of a mediator. You have a Hamas delegation being welcomed by Russia. Thereafter, you have a delegation coming in from Iran. Let's not forget what uh, Turkey has to say. Turkey now openly is saying that, look here, Hamas is not a terrorist organization. It's a resistance movement. All that put together, where do you see the situation going further? Well, first of all, uh, Hamas is, uh... is not a terrorist organization. It's a terrorist army. This is an army. These are, they've got tens of thousands of soldiers, terrorist soldiers, who've been trained over the last 15 years. This is not a small organization. This is a, a huge setup. It's one of the top terrorist armies in the world. In terms of the geopolitical scenario, you are absolutely correct. And I'll even go one step further. You know, we, we knew all along that many of these people who attacked had been trained in Iran, but the Wall Street Journal finally published it yesterday that over 500 of the attackers had been trained in Iran in the last three months. In addition to that, we know, well, okay, we have very strong evidence pointing to Wagner involvement, uh, where there was training done in Africa, for many of those who attacked. So, you know, this is a, a major geopolitical event where, um, in effect, the real aim of it is to scupper, to torpedo Saudi Arabian Israeli ties, because that normalization, that connection between Saudi Arabia and Israel is the key to the Indian, Middle Eastern, European corridor. And the Indian, Middle Eastern, European corridor, the IMEC, is the biggest infrastructure project ever done by the free world. And it is the biggest challenge, the biggest threat to the Chinese Belt okay. and Road Initiative, the BRI. And therefore, we have to respond together in coordination with our allies. Our allies understand this. That's why they have sent two aircraft carriers and warships. 
and we will respond together. And okay. I thank the Indian government. I thank your Prime Minister Modi for being so strong and clear on this issue. The free world has fought the forces of communism and won. It's fought the forces of Nazism and won. And it will fought, fight the forces of terror and autocracy and will win too. Okay. Dr. Joseph, Dr. Joseph uh, the question that I wanted to ask you, in fact, uh, Terry Newman has already answered, but I want to ask you the current situation that President Biden really faces. On the one hand, there is growing pressure coming in from a section within his own party, the Democrats. On the other hand, the Republicans have been quite supportive of the initiative that the president has essentially taken. Do you believe that with the president walking a tight rope right now, the pressure would also be felt by the Israelis? Um, again, uh, while I, my heart goes out to all the innocent uh, victims of the conflict, um, you know, this is clearly uh, an attack by terrorists on Israel. And this is, uh, this is uh, you know, a, a key moment, you know, very similar to what India felt when Mumbai was attacked. This is uh, similar to what the terrorists are doing from Pakistan. And this is the time the world needs to speak out against terrorism, um, you know, worldwide, including supporting Israel. So let me let me put it, you know, two things which were coming together. Again, when President Biden came into office, um, he wasn't uh, uh, meeting with Netanyahu, you know, for a year after he became the prime minister of of, of Israel. Um, and the second time, uh, we also know that uh, Biden, uh, uh, when he took the presidency, went to or was the first meeting with the MBS, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, was not willing to shake his hand uh, because of the pressures we had against him. And if you see, look at the G20, Prime Minister Modi was the first person who forcefully took the hand of Netanyahu and MBS uh, and, and Biden, sorry, um, not Netanyahu, I mean, you know, with uh, President Biden and MBS together and took into a handshake of, of Israel and Saudi Arabia. And that, I believe, threatened the, 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 the people who were, who were making a business out of war. You know, if you've been to Gaza, I've been to Gaza. If you've been to uh, you know, Beirut, you will see how poorly they live, not because of lack of opportunities, because right across the wall, Israel is very similar to any U.S. cities. And, and Gaza uh, citizens had the same opportunity they had, but uh, they were kept poor by giving freebies and, uh, and, and not given opportunity to work. The economic quality, on the other, other hand, should have enhanced the opportunity for those people to improve their life. Um, to, to have jobs and, and, and revenue for them and, and in the in, increase the business opportunities. And any um, collaboration between Israel and Saudi Arabia, as Mr. Newman correctly pointed out, would have um, you know, killed this Arab-Israeli conflict um, into a partnership and, and, and people could be living peacefully together forever. And that is not what Ayatollahs want and the, peace and the, and the corridor is not what China wants. So between the Iranian Ayatollahs uh, and the Chinese money, I believe they planned this, and this was this. There's no choice now but India to support. And this is the same thing what we saw in in Qatar, where uh, Indian uh, army or navy officers now being sentenced to death, uh, uh, claiming to be spying for Israel. These are absurd claims. You know, this is a time we India and Israel need to stick together. Right. You know, while we need to avoid as many victims as possible, innocent victims in this war, but terrorism need to be eradicated from the face of earth. Well, in fact, uh, Dr. Joseph and Terry Newman, I would request you to stay on with us as I would like to quickly go across to my colleague, uh, Gursum Rizik, who has been reporting for the last few days, uh, covering ve various vantage points across uh, Israel, giving us, uh, bringing us up to speed about the current situation. Gursum Rizik, first, give us a sense uh, of uh, what's the current situation like. Many still waiting for that action to be taken by the Israeli Defense Forces. In fact, uh, I believe a preparatory uh, act was performed by the IDF uh, where the tanks had entered Gaza. But what's the situation like? Are we to expect a full-blown ground invasion in the coming few days? And also give us some details of the place from where you're reporting right now.
Uh, Sri Shaman, right now we are reporting from Yakini and this is one of the, uh, near the one of the key operational bases of the Israel Defense Forces from where they are pounding the uh, heavy artillery into the terror hideouts of the Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Important to mention that uh, this was the same place where we have seen that the forces uh, of the Israel Defense uh, uh, System, IDF forces, they entered into the uh, territory of the Hamas, especially the Gaza Strip when they entered day before yesterday and a seven hour long, roughly seven hour long operation was carried out. It was here only that they entered into the territory and uh, uh, the Merkavas along with the armed personal carrier and the BMPs, everything landed into the territory of Gaza. It uh, took the, say, around six to seven hours for this operation in which some of the key commanders of the Hamas were also killed. But the main focus was on the terror tunnel infrastructure that the Hamas has in their land. And they uh, continue to decimate that in the territory of Hamas uh, uh, that is in the Gaza and they returned back safely after carrying out the operation, Shavan. Well, Gursimran, I'll just request you if you can just move around and perhaps also give us a sense because as I understand, the place from where you're reporting is barely about 400 meters away from the Gaza Strip, the border area which is where you're essentially reporting from. It also, while you take, us, take our viewers through what's really happening on the ground, could you also tell us in terms of the mobilization of the troops on the southern side, what's the situation like and up in the north, What's the response to some of the skirmishes that have taken place from Hezbollah? Uh, see, Sean, right now, uh, let me ask Vijay Surendra Shah to move in and we'll show you that this is the uh, close militarized zone. This entire area has been closed by the Israel Defense Forces for any civilian population to come here. And uh, the, all the locals have been asked to vacate their houses since this comes in the two kilometers area from the border side. So uh, this is one of the closest areas uh, when it comes to the north of Gaza. And that's why this entire area has been closed for the civilian population and uh, the, uh, the nearby area has been made the operational base. As we speak, we can hear some of the loud banks uh, that are taking place. These are the artillery fires that are being done into the uh, side of Gaza. So uh, if, if you, uh, I'll request Vijay Surendra Shah to keep moving, that we can show that uh, hardly uh, it's uh, 300 to 400 meters in the aerial distance uh, is the place where uh, the uh, Gaza Strip actually begins. That is the border of uh, Israel to the Gaza Strip. And there uh, in the nearby vicinity of uh, the uh, fence, there are some of the hideouts that are believed to be of the Hamas terrorists that are now, now being pounded shells by the side of Israel Defense Forces. These also includes the pin precision strikes that are taking place with the help of Israel Defense Forces Air Force Wing and also the strikes that are taking place, especially the strikes that are now being conducted with the use of heavy artillery. So they are what they are doing is, uh, uh, is clearing the area that is very close to the fence so that once the uh, decision is taken that that a full-scale incursion will take place, then there is no threat very near to the border and then in a phased manner the forces will be moving ahead. And when it comes to the threat from the Hezbollah, today there have been almost almost five to six incidents where the Hezbollah terrorists try to lob uh, uh, the uh, grenades, uh, RPG launchers on the Israel Defense Forces. That was thwarted and multiple terror cells of the uh, Hezbollah group, they were uh, decimated, they were killed by the Israel Defense Forces in the attack. When it comes to the Hamas terror groups. There have been a major setback today also to the leadership of Hamas. Many of their key commanders have been utilized today. Shavan. Well, thank you very much, uh, Gur Simran, for getting us that live report from southern Israel. And also Terry Newman and Dr. Joseph for joining us on the trending burning question.